So we are going to start to analyze stresses in beams. Um, and to do that, we're going to make some uh, assumptions about the beams that we're going to be dealing with because there's lots of different systems where while this framework will remain true, some of the assumptions may not apply, so we need to make sure that we know that. So we are going to be looking at, um, basically, when we apply a load, we're going to see that there are going to be internal shear and bending moments that are created. Um, and we are going to be analyzing primarily the normal stresses because they are much greater than shear stresses, especially when we have a long beam, basically when the length over height is greater than 10. Um, we're also going to make some other critical assumptions. Our beam is straight. It's linear, elastic, isotropic, and cubic. Uh, our X section is symmetric. And our beam is stable, so no lateral buckling. So we are going to break down our beam uh, and define some critical locations. So the first is this neutral axis. Beams are unique because the stresses are going to be um, basically symmetric as you traverse uh, kind of the interior of your beam. We'll see that in just a second. Uh, but the neutral axis is essentially, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is the axis that will experience zero stress, regardless of when we apply essentially our load on the beam. So this is going to be our neutral axis for this beam here. We've defined our coordinate system. We have, when we're examining essentially this distance dx, and when we deflect this beam, um, we are going to have positive or negative curvature as we see here. And there's going to be, basically curvature is going to be defined as one over our principal radii, one over rho in this scenario. And we can kind of see here. And if we are bending in this scenario, this positive curvature, tension will occur basically on this side of the beam. So you're going to have tension all the way to the neutral axis. Then it'll flip into compression. So, and we see our bending moments essentially that occur here as well. So, when we are analyzing um, this beam bending to get to our statement in our stress expression, we are going to look at and create first a geometric statement, a const then we're going to develop our constitutive equations, and then apply our equilibrium conditions in order to get our final expression for stress. So we're going to start with a geometric statement. So we've already defined previously, and we saw that our curvature is going to be one over our principal radii. We could also define that in terms of dx and d theta here. So that's just a mathematical kind of description, but also a geometric statement as well. And remember, we're going to have positive curvature and negative curvature, and we can essentially see those. Um, so we've defined those as we've done previously. Now we can move on to our constitutive equations. So we need to relate stress and strain, and specifically normal stresses. So let's think about a quick experiment, and we're going to look at this line EF here. And we have defined previously that our initial length, so before we bend this, you know, <laughs> bend this beam, it's we had that distance dx. So our initial length was dx. If you want to see our change in length, we're going to have to take our rho minus this distance y from our neutral axis, d theta. So to calculate strain and develop our constitutive equations, we can just write Li minus L0, and we get an expression where the strain is proportional to the distance y from the neutral axis and our curvature kappa, which makes sense. If we have smaller principal radii and more curvature, we're going to have larger strain. Additionally, we see this is a negative strain here. So if we are positive y, so if we define, again, our neutral axis, where y is equal to zero here. If we're positive y, we're going to be in compression. The strain is negative. So the strain is, I mean, the strain is negative, so we are in compression that matches. If we are negative y here, you know, you can see that this negative times a negative will be a positive, and it makes sense because on this side here, we're all in tension. So our equations make sense intuitively because if we're, again, judging from the neutral axis, where this is why positive y's times a negative, our curvature is going to always be positive if we're in this scenario because we're bending the beam like so. So this is positive, this is positive, so our strain will be negative, which makes sense because we're compression, we're compression here, we're tension here, and we get our values. And when y is at zero, we have no strain and therefore no stress. So we can relate that to our stress by simply plugging in our Young's moduli expression. 
and you can calculate your strains in other words. There's the section of an anelastic curvature board, and I didn't get into that. Um, now, finally, we can develop our equilibrium conditions. So we stated that we need to make sure that the sum of our forces must be equal to zero and the sum of moments as well. So we can plug in our expression for stress times a cross-sectional area. We can you know, basically pull out this expression. The Young's modulus must have a value, so must curvature, and there must be some cross-sectional area. So if this is true, we need to make sure that this must be, true, it must be valid. Our integral of y over some area must be equal to zero. And this expression should look somewhat familiar back to statics. Yes, indeed, that is our centroid must be equal to zero. So our z-axis has to pass through the center of that cross-section. Um, additionally, we, we have to say that the sum of our moments must be equal to zero. So similarly, we can set that expression up. We can pull out, and now we can see that the only way for this to be true, actually, we can see right here that once we rearrange our expressions, we have our moment of inertia, I. You see that this pops out from our sum of our moments expression. So we rearrange, and you can kind of see this kind of central expression. So now, this is for a cross-sectional area. This is for basically a circular cross-section. But we can rearrange our expression, say that our moment of inertia is equal to kappa EI, and I can now write that in terms of stress because we had an expression here previously. We can kind of scroll down here. Stress in terms of our curvature. So now we don't have to work with some, curvature can be sometimes like an arbitrary or a hard value to kind of measure or arbitrary. Um, now we can write out our moment, which we can measure um, and derive actually in terms of a stress expression. So we can rewrite our expression and say that stress is equal to minus the moment times y distance from their neutral axis um, times or divided by, excuse me, our moment of inertia. So this is our expression for the stress uh, as a function of that bending moment. And you have your stress in the beam right here with this expression. So now I can write out throughout the whole cross section, what's the stress in that beam as a function of that, those values. So we've got it. Now, this is extremely fantastic. We've got our expression and our equation for how we can write out or calculate the stress in our beam. But now the question comes, well, what about the deflection of our beam? That's another important parameter that we need to develop. Well, we're going to use the same framework, and we are going to uh, work with that fourth order ODE, and we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.